Hello, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. Now today I have ideas for creating unique bridge cards. Now I've shown different ways to make bridge cards in the past, and I will link to those videos up here on the top right and at the end of this video. But today's bridge card design is a bit different. It's really easy to make and you just need basic supplies. You can also use this design with a variety of dies, stencils, uh, stamps, and much more. So I have several examples for you and I'll be sharing different card sizes. I have a lot to share, including this bonus card. So let's go ahead and get started with the first example. Here is the completed card, just so you know the direction we're headed. It fits nicely into an envelope and flattens, but as soon as you take it out, the front pops up. It's called a bridge card because you have the two sides that pop up and an element stretching across it. It looks great on display, stands up nicely, and really is just a fun way to use your products creatively. I'll be making the background first with that stenciling because it needs some time to dry. For this, I am using the new Altenew Journey Abroad Ensemble. So there are different products in this and you can buy them separately or together. One is the hot foil plate and the other is the layering stencils. Now for this bridge card, I'll just be using the layering stencils alone, but for my bonus card, I'll use them both together. I know that not everyone is into foiling, so I wanted to be sure to share what this looks like without that step. So I have the first of the layering stencils. Actually, I'm skipping to stencil number two. They are numbered and there is a guide that comes with them that makes it really easy to figure out. But what I like to do with layering stencils like this is line up the stencils in the top corner of my cardstock each time. If I always line up in the top corner, I know my stenciling will line up. All the layers will easily line up. So over this one, I'm applying Altenew Fresh Dye Ink in the Aqualicious color. You could use absolutely any inks you want to. I really like the fresh inks from Altenew. The ink is just really thick and juicy and stamps and blends beautifully. You'll see some creative uses of this ink in some upcoming videos. All right, so now for the next stencil, I just line that up with the to top corner of my cardstock once again, and you'll see it lines up beautifully. This time I'm using a lighter color called Dew Drops. So I'm rubbing some of the excess ink that was darker from my brush off onto a dry cloth, and then I can come in with the lighter color. I'm using the large blending brushes from Altenew. These are my favorite to use whenever I'm covering a stencil with the same color, like a large area, or if I'm blending a background. All right, now on to the next stencil. And what's cool about these stencils is you, can, is you can only do one, two, or three of them and get a really fun background. You don't have to use them all. I'll be using all of them today. All right, so next up we have blush, which is a light uh, kind of pinkish peach color that is just beautiful. These are actually my two favorite colors to use together, the pool colors and the peaches. So I'm really excited about this background. All right, so this stencil, you actually will use both sides. So I'm gonna clean it. I gave it a spritz with rubbing alcohol, wipe it clean with a dry cloth, and then I'll take the same stencil but flip it over and line it up. That's what it says to do in the instructions and it's amazing how it lines up to form this great background. And I like that it has that flip over feature because it saves on the cost because it means one less stencil. All right, so that's what we have so far. We could totally stop here if we wanted to or we could fill in all the remaining white space with another color of ink, like a gray would be pretty. But I chose to use a clear glitter paste. This is the Tonic Nouveau Glimmer Paste. I think it's the Moonstone color. I'm applying globs of this on one edge of the stencil using my Simon Hurley paste tool set. So this is a palette knife. You really could use anything here. Then this large scraper that comes in that same tool set, I can take those globs of paste and just spread across the stencil. I like to scrape off all the excess. It gives better results and I can save all that excess, put it back in the jar and use it on another project. I will immediately go wash with soapy water the tools and the stencil so that it doesn't dry on the stencil. And here is a look at that shine. Now, it doesn't sparkle that much in my video, but in real life, it has a lot of sparkle to it. And I just think it finishes off that background nicely. Next up, I'll create that unique bridge card design that pops up when you take it out of the envelope. For this, I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that is 10 and 3 quarter inches by 6 inches. I will then score at 1 and a quarter inch, 2 and a quarter inch, 
and three and a quarter inch from each edge of that cardstock. So I'll do it on both sides. You could change up the size that you create here, but this is going to end up creating a bridge card that is four and a quarter inches wide by six inches tall, a little taller than normal, but I'll share other sizes of these bridge cards throughout this video. Okay, so now I will start folding along these score lines that we've created. And I'm just gonna go back and forth doing a zigzag fold on each side of the cardstock. As for what kind of cardstock to use for this, I always use heavyweight cardstock. However, you could use a lighter weight cardstock here if you want to, because we'll be adding layers on it, which will give it more strength. All right, so once I have those folded, kind of zigzag or accordion on each edge, this is what we have. It has these pop-up sides on the front panel of this. My background is now dry, so I can trim it down to have three pieces to add to the front of our bridge card. I will cut strips off the left and the right that are a little bit less than one and a quarter inches wide. So these will each go on those bridge pieces that pop up, and then the bigger piece will go in the center area of the bridge card that sits back. I'm using a strong liquid adhesive. This is Gina K Connect liquid adhesive in a fine tip bottle, and I'm gluing the two thinner strips to the areas that pop up on the front of our card panel. And this is gonna leave me a little trim around the top, bottom, and the side so that when this card is flattened, it looks like you have a white trim all the way around the card. All right, now that centerpiece, I'm just gonna center it up as much as I can right there in the middle flat part. So now you can see this flattens and you have a complete covered pattern with the white trim around the top, bottom, and sides. Now it's time for me to form that bridge that goes across the two panels, the left and right panels. So I have a large heart die cut. It's actually three die cuts thick, so it's nice and strong. I will put adhesive only on the left edge and the right edge. You want a strong adhesive here. I'll press that, press that down so that the heart connects that left panel and right panel, but it's not gluing to that background area. I will then put something heavy on that while it dries. I also have a sentiment that I foiled. I'll show you more about this sentiment later in this video. I'm putting glue on the back of that and adding it on top of the heart. And again, we'll put something heavy on it while it dries. You really wanna make sure you use a strong glue because that's what's connecting the bridge together. All right, I also wanted some more sparkle on this. So here I am adding some little sequins to the pattern in the background. You could skip that if you wanted to. I also have a note card. This is about four by five and a half inches, and I'm gluing that to the back of our bridge card. That'll give me a place to write a personal message. All right, so now let's look at what this looks like after you take it out of the envelope. It pops up right there on the front, giving instant dimension and a really unique look. You've got the area to write a sentiment on the inside, and this stands up really nicely on display. It's a great one for keepsake. Another reason this one's good for display is all the sparkle. The glitter paste and the sequins really catch the light nicely, especially in natural light. So this is a simple kind of unique bridge card design. You could do any background here and have any large element stretch across it. Now I did make this card a bit taller because I could, so I have an A6 envelope to put this in. You could also use a five by seven envelope, but the final size of this card is four and a quarter by six inches. Again, I'll show you other sizes as we go. But before I do more bridge card designs, I have this bonus card here. It's a quick one. I just wanted to show you what those stencils look like if you use the foil plate also. So I have my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine, which is a foiling machine, and I have that foil plate taped onto a piece of white cardstock. Underneath the foil plate, I'll slide a piece of prism foil from Spellbinders, one of my favorite. I'll then flip that all over, put it onto my warmed up glimmer machine, put the plates on top, including a cardstock shim, and press the timer button. I put a cardstock shim in there. I like to do that whenever I have a big plate like this, but it's not always necessary. When the timer is ready, I'll take all of the plates out and run it through my die cut machine, which will apply the pressure. If you have a different die cut machine other than the Spellbinders Platinum, there are other uh, hot foil machines out there. You just need to check with the manufacturer. All right, so once I ran that back and forth, you'll see I get beautiful foil results with that background foil plate, just gorgeous. Then you can use those same four stencils I used earlier, line them up with your foiling, and add ink color. 
So I did all of that off screen using various shades of blue and green cardstock. I inked over all of the stencils. I skipped the glitter paste this time, but you can see how you have that shiny outline with this version. So it just shows you that companies offer different products that work well together and separately. And I really appreciate that because you have the option. So that's just a little bonus card I wanted to throw in there. Now let's go back to the bridge card designs and create one that looks completely different and a different card size. Once again, the card front pops up with a die cut stretched across forming a bridge. This time I'm using the adorable Altenew Orange Blossom die set. I love die sets like this that are really easy to layer and you can use in many different ways. I thought this would look lovely across a bridge card. So as I'm gluing these layers together, I will put extra die cuts along the branch. I'll glue two or three branch die cuts together because that branch is really what is forming the bridge with everything glued on it. So if you only did one die cut thick, that's pretty weak and not really strong enough to form a bridge. So I would recommend using two or three sheets of heavy cardstock. And then I arrange my little orange blossom branch here after gluing those together, I realized all of those die cuts are glued together with very little glue, right? There's very little connection. So one of the things I like to do is when it's dry, I flip it over and I put kind of globs of glue anywhere they connect. And then I just leave it to sit and dry like this. Those globs of glue will dry and help to make a better connection between all of the die cuts. That's really only necessary when you have a lot of die cuts only connected in tiny little areas. All right, next let's create that bridge card base. It's very similar to what we did last time, but this time I'm starting with cardstock that is only five and a half inches wide. So this is 10 and three quarter inches by five and a half inches wide. I will score in the same places as last time, one and a quarter, two and a quarter and three and a quarter inches from both sides of the cardstock. So from both ends, I then will do the accordion fold in and out on both sides, just like we did before. So this will result in a card that is four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. I'll show you a five by seven version a little later in this video. Now this you could do stamping on if you wanted to. I thought I'd use an embossing folder. I have my Spellbinders die cut machine. You could use whatever die cut machine you have and a new all to new Moroccan tile embossing folder. I have misted my cardstock with a bit of water and I'm placing it centered in the embossing folder and running it through my die cut machine, just following the instructions for a 3d embossing folder. Then once that's done, I will do this a second time. So I'll end up with two pieces of light blue cardstock with this beautiful embossed pattern. From one of these, I will cut a piece that's about four inches wide by five and a half inches tall, and I'll glue it there in the center. Then from the other panel, I cut two strips that are one and a quarter inch wide, so they would cover both of those side panels. I am using strong liquid adhesive here to add that to our card base. Now you'll notice I use quite a bit of adhesive there. Not, actually not a lot of adhesive, but I put a little bit of adhesive in a lot of the area. That's because I'm gluing on something that has texture to it. So I really want to make sure it grabs into those little valleys that the embossing folder creates. So here you'll see it's a thin line of adhesive, but I'm putting it in a lot of the area. This one will get glued to the inside. So these pieces will completely cover that white card base that we created. I never get tired of the texture that embossing folders adds. It always steps up a card. Now for a sentiment, I'm using the older Delightful Day stamp set and coordinating die set. I stamped the greeting, used the coordinating die to cut it out, and then I created two additional die cuts, and I'll glue that behind our stamped one. This will give the sentiment strength because it'll also be stretched across the bridge. I'm putting something heavy up there on the top of the card to hold it flat, and then I'm putting strong liquid adhesive on the left and right edge of our sentiment and gluing it across, forming that bridge on the bottom. I'll then place something heavy on that while it dries. Now we need to glue the orange branch across that bridge. So I make sure that I only put my adhesive on the left side and the right side, but I'm using a pretty generous amount because I need it to get into the nooks and crannies of the texture from the embossing folder. I will then place that stretched across the bridge and then put something heavy on it while it dries. 
I'm using some glass paperweights, but you could use a book, a die cut machine, anything heavy to give it time to really make that connection and dry. All right, once it's done, I will go back and squeeze a little more adhesive anywhere I feel I need to make a better connection. So I'm just kind of feeling around to make sure everything is nice and strong, and then I'll give that some time to dry too. The last step is to glue this onto a card base. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. So it will open like a traditional card. You could just write your personal message on the back of that bridge panel if you want to. Totally up to you. All right, so you see it flattens to fit into a regular envelope and then it pops up as soon as you take it out of the envelope. Looking great on display. This time we have that intricate die cut piece that we assembled, that orange blossom branch and the sentiment connecting that bridge. Really the bridge here is all about being able to form that fun pop-up as soon as you take it out of the envelope. Just something fun and different to do with your supplies. All right, let's do another bridge card of the same size, but this time have a large die cut that bridges across it that you could put anything on. And I'll explain why that there's an advantage to this type of design as we go. But first let's create the bird on this. I'm using a new layering set from Altenew. I really like that their packaging has the guide on how to layer the die cuts, but there is also that keyhole feature where you line up the keyholes that the die cuts so you know you've got it layered just right. I'll show you more of that later in this video. I am making an imaginary bird, which is a bright pool and gray. I just wanted to use these colors. I believe in card making, you can use whatever colors you want. Next, I can do my sentiment. And I'm really excited about this set here. It's called Encouraging Sentiments. It includes hot foil plates and dies. Now I'm gonna show you a closer look at them all in a moment, but first let's get this foiling. So I am creating a little hinge with a piece of tape, sliding some foil underneath it, so the pretty side of the foil touches the pretty side of the plate. And then I'll flip that over and place it onto my warmed up glimmer machine. I'll put the plates on top and press the timer button. While that's going, let's go back to the encouraging sentiments. Notice there are hot foil sentiments, then coordinating dies to cut them out. Then there are word dies that you can layer on top of the foil or use separately. So you can use those die cut words separate from the foil or together. I'm going to use them together in just a moment. So the glimmer machine timer was done, so I took all the plates out, ran it through my die cut machine, and I get beautiful results. Now I just foiled that in gold, but I changed my mind and foiled it again in blue. So I'll be using blue for this card. I'll now use the coordinating die to cut that out, giving me a beautiful foiled sentiment. However, I'm gonna step that up by die cutting blue foil for the word thank you, and I'll glue it on top just to add some dimension. I'll first create blue foiled paper. You see that thank you there? I'm creating that blue foil paper using the same foil as before. Now you need a solid hot foil plate in order to do this, but you can also use the back of a background hot foil plate as you'll see here. So I'm putting that plate upside down on my glimmer machine. And then I'll place the foil pretty side down on top of that then a piece of smooth white cardstock. And I'll do the same glimmer process, adding a cardstock shim in there just for extra pressure. I'll give that a little extra time to heat up past the timer, then take that all out and run it through the die cut machine. This will give me a large solid piece of blue foiled cardstock. Again, you could use a solid hot foil plate. There are some available on the market, or you could use the back of a background hot foil plate as I did here. All right, so now I can remove the release paper from this and we have blue foiled cardstock that I can die cut from. And that die cut will match the blue foiled sentiment we just created a moment ago. So now from this, I couldn't decide which sentiment to do, so I cut more than one. I ended up using the thank you. And now I'll glue that die cut thank you on top of the foiling. Again, you could skip this, it just gives some more dimension and it gives you the option to use these thank you die cuts separate from the rest of the foiled sentiment. It's nice again to have those options. I did die cut two additional thank you die cuts from white cardstock and I glued it to the back of the foil one so that this die cut will stand up even more from the background. So now we have this really unique sentiment. On my other cards, I had smaller die cuts stretched across the bridge. This time I'm gonna put a bunch of die cuts on one larger one to stretch across the bridge. 
I'm using the new all to new ornate nesting die set. This has a really cool shape to it and also has an embossing line that it does just inside of the cut line for extra detail. So I cut one of those from white cardstock and on it I'm arranging a bunch of die cuts. Now these leaves, I'll show you what die set they're from on our next card, but I'm tucking those under our foil sentiment die cut and then adding the bird on top. So this is nice because you can put anything on here, simple stamp sentiment, any really ornate die cuts, whatever you want, and you don't have to worry about it being strong because you're gluing it onto this large die cut. And that's strong enough as is to kind of form that bridge from the two side panels on the front of our bridge card. So I put liquid adhesive on the back of that large die cut on just the left and right edges, and I'm gluing that onto the front of a bridge card that I created exactly like the last one. Same dimensions, so it ends up being four and a quarter by five and a half inches with that pop-up dimension on the front. Now I will put something heavy on this while it dries and then cut the bottom leaf off so that the card can stand up nicely. Everything else that's hanging off, I'm gonna leave there and I'll just put it in a bigger A6 or five by seven envelope so it has room for those pieces of the die cuts to hang off. Once again, I glued this bridge card panel onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. You could skip that and just write the sentiment on the back if you prefer. But the nice thing about this particular design is you have that large die cut that stretches forming the bridge. So you can put anything on there, even just a simple stamped element. So it doesn't have to be detailed, delicate die cuts or sentiments that stretch across the bridge. It can be something large like this that is really just kind of like a platform for other things to go on. And you get that fun dimension. Okay, my next one is a bit bigger. This is actually a wedding card for one of Lila's former babysitters. Really excited about it. Her wedding has pink, so I thought this was perfect. I'm using the new all to new embellished star die to be what stretches across our bridge. This is a giant die with lots of detail. I cut it once from silver matte cardstock and once from white cardstock, and I'll glue those together for strength. We want that to be strong and thick because it's stretching across the bridge. Now this card will be bigger, so let's create the bridge card panel. This is a piece of cardstock that is 11 inches wide by seven inches tall. I'll do the same score lines as I have done on every card at one and a quarter, two and a quarter, and three and a quarter inches. And I'll do that on both sides of the cardstock piece. You definitely could vary where those score lines are, but I tested a lot of different options and I found this worked really well. And I'll do the same thing I've done many times. I'll keep folding back and forth along those score lines on each side. And I end up with a larger bridge card card front. Now this ends up being seven inches tall and four and a half inches wide. I couldn't make it five inches wide without making those sides smaller or using a bigger piece of cardstock. So I ended up with a four and a half by five inch bridge panel card. All right, so now we can glue this layered die cut across the bridge. So I only put adhesive on the left and the right back of this die cut and I will press that down onto our bridge card. I find it always helpful to flatten the bridge card when I do this so that I can be sure when it dries and that die cuts glued to it that it'll still flatten nicely. Again, the adhesive is only on the back left and right of that layered die cut. While that has some time to dry, let's create the flowers for the front. I'm using the new Altenew new Prickly Pear Layering Floral Set. Now it has those leaves that come with it, but I'm gonna change that up. So here is what Altenew offers. You can see it creates these little keyhole shapes in the center with a number. That makes it so it's easy to layer the die cuts together. You don't have to figure out which way to orient, it, orient them. And you don't have to figure out which one goes where and what order. It's numbered with that keyhole system. And you can follow the little guide that you see there that comes with the dies. So I cut that from various scraps of cardstock and now I'm layering them together just using that keyhole in the center and the numbers that are embossed on the die cuts to figure out how to do it and it takes no time at all. Then we just add the little flower centers to it using shades of yellow cardstock. I created three flowers, I'll use two on this card and I'll save one for later. 
Next, I'm using the Plum Blossoms Layering Floral Die Set. Now, I'm not using the flowers from this. I'm just using the leaves. These are the leaves I used on my bird card also. And I cut those from two shades of green cardstock. Now that my bridge card is dry, I'll trim the excess off so that it'll have that nice smooth edge. And then I can add my flower die cuts and leaves and sentiment right onto that silver die cut. I do not want to flatten this while it dries because if any of that adhesive goes through that silver die cut, it'll glue the card flat to the inside of the bridge card. So I'm just going to glue it here and leave it. I really wanted it to be very full there in the center, so I added a lot of leaves. And then I created a Celebrate Sentiment from one of my favorite Altenew Word sets. This is the Sweet Sentiment die set. I cut Celebrate from black glossy cardstock and the shadow from white, and added that right there at the center of our floral bouquet. After I glued a note card to the back of it, we have our completed card. It is four and a half by seven, and I'll put it in a five by seven envelope. I also added some pink pearls scattered on the card for a little bit of bling. So for this card, it's gonna be a wedding card for um, someone special, and I chose the colors of her wedding. So I think that she'll really like it. So I hope that these examples of creating a unique bridge card where it just kind of pops up on the front is something that you will try. Again, at the end here, I will link to a couple other bridge card videos that flatten a little bit differently. So it's just different options and you can try them with the supplies you have. I did link below to all the products that I use so you can check that out if you want to. This is also part of a video hop for Altenew, so check out the other stops on the hop. There will be a great giveaways, and there's information about how to enter that giveaway down in the description also. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon with another video, and take care.